Hi, my name's Ben and welcome to Anglin View. Today you join me on Alston Ferry Fisheries. And today we're going to be fishing with the Preston Jira Banjo and this is going to be the elasticated version. Now I've done the, fi the, the filming before with um, the Jira Banjo but never with an elasticated one. So I'm going to try out for the try and get this fish in and then we'll go on a little a bit about what the difference is with a, an elasticated feeder and, and that sometimes not all venues will allow you to use it. Um, but we'll show you the advantages of it um, primarily just right now when we've got this fish on so when they are under under your feet it's adding as a little extra shock absorber um, like you would be fishing on your pole and it's giving you that little extra bit of freedom when the when the fish is nodding its head um, it's it, it's not in line that makes it un, not in line uh, which some venues don't allow you to use um, this venue does though but we'll get it in hopefully and then we'll talk a little bit about it and about the rig but these fish at Houston Ferry you must come down and have a go they're, they're just fighting fit they have all the, the three or four pounders um, right down to the little ones they're, they're all just give 110 every time you catch them and you know we're on a pleasure session it's not about ragging them um, about that I'm fishing a, a KKMB 16s hook, so we're not we're not fishing we're not fishing donkey gear. There he is. Just click. So a little bit of an advice when you've netted a fish like that, just click the anti reverse on your rod. That allows you to just stick your rod out of the way while you get the fish in. Saves you getting all tangled up in the line. So we'll just nick that hook out. Just hooked in the corner of the mouth. And we'll get him put in the net and we'll go through the rig. Right, so once you've uh, even hooked him, let's get this this rod uh, back and we'll get this uh, this rig looked at. So, I'll start by going through uh, the the rod. So, I've got a nice Daiwa Yankum bank rod. So, really nice, light. This is an, sort of an 11 foot. Um, comes with a multitude of different tips and really soft. And the main reason is the soft action. It fires all the way from, down from the butt section all the way down to the tip. And um, that's in couple with a, a Daiwa Ninja a reel. Again, this is um, a 3000. Um, they are great really decent price 40 45 quid you can pick them up probably cheaper than that second hand really good piece of kit and that's got um eight pound Daiwa hyper sensor on there we're not missing about as the, the the fish in 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 here i'll put if you ever go you go into the angling for you um facebook group or the instagram you'll see the fish that i've had from earlier on in this session uh, which is fishing which i was fishing another method uh, which was 17 pound four and you know you need the line and the gear to to tackle those kind of fish so um so this is going on to the feeder so most most of you have seen a hybrid uh, or a jura banjo sorry or a hybrid feeder or anything of that nature now the reason i like to use the jura banjos and uh, it's really really simply re reason really is obviously like i said to you this one's not in line and uh, so i'll explain that so this cap if you take it off slide it down your line because it's not in line if it was in line it would slide like the cap is up and down the line and that would be going down to like a feeder or, or quick change bead which is like what's in the end of this um, and that would be straight through the stem and straight to that bead but because we've got an elasticated feeder i've got a loop in the line and that's gone through the hole in the top of the stem over and back on itself and that means it's not free running it's fixed so the good thing that i like about the jura banjos and i know a couple of other uh, people do it as well but the reason I, I, I really like the jurors, so if you push down, once you've taken the sleeve off, you push down, you can push the stem out. Once it stems out, the feeder will move completely off. So for example, just get this, this other feeder that's inside of me. If I wanted to go to a lighter, uh, but bigger feeder, so this is a bigger feeder, but it actually weighs less. I just put that back onto the line and slide the stem through and I'm straight into 
another feeder and I just I'd put back on the uh, the sleeve so it's so good for interchanging you can do this with bombs as well the bombs the the, the, the bombs will sit on the same stem and you can also get the stems that are inline stems so obviously they won't have elastic so like I said it's looped on and in in the bottom it's got an elastic so this has got like a purple hollow in there and it's attached to a feeder bead now that feeder bead would ideally be on the on your line and all the way through if you were fishing an inline one but like I said it's all part of its own stem and that's where it's clipped on to the hook link now it's six inch hook link um, and that's fishery rules and we have got um, an, an 016 hook link on there sorry it's an 018 hook link and it's pro gen gen pro line and um, so a KKMB size 16 and it's got a little tiny quick stop which is going to be right next to the hook to make sure that we're, we're not missing any bites. And, and it can't be as simple as that really. Um, I'm just going to slide off this one because we, we are fishing with the other one. And we'll have a quick go onto the bait because that's really important. Um, and I'm sure you've seen various varieties. Now this pond, uh, it seems to favour sort of crabby um, seafoody baits. So I'm just going to lift off this to the side just while we talk about that so that, down there just rest that on there so bait wise i've got two sets of bait and it, so i've got the sono baits krill micro pellets um and i've just the two mil ones and i've just soaked them uh, in a bit of water and in a crab glug no matter what brand you go for just a normal crab glug it just puts that really fishy smell in it so they're the two mills and then in this one now i do like milled expander uh, ground um krill flavor again sono baits but this one is another sono baits and this is just um a, the krill crush uh, variety so it's very similar uh, and what we're doing is it, this allows you have you noticed i've kept them separate so this allows you to fish just ground bait if you want on the feeder just pellets on the feeder or if i bring you my other one as you can see here i've mixed up a 50 50 blend of ground bait and pellets now it's quite dry and that's the reason is there is that i'm fishing up to it's quite um shallow so what i want it to do is explode um and the, the hook bait which i'm using today is corn uh is really really visible because it's yellow and it's really easy to see uh so i i prefer mixing it but i don't like to mix it all as one just in case they're off it and you want to introduce more pellets to get more carp there sometimes you should get more silvers there some on some venues if you just use the ground bait so what we'll do is we'll put it all together um if you wanted it a little bit wetter than that you could add just a touch more water to i to you know the pellets are soft enough but to the um to the ground bit if you wanted it a little bit softer um if you were casting it to a lot farer for example uh, but we're not doing that so i'm just going to put that over there and i'll show you how, how we how we put all this together now we're fishing and um, we've got a slight uh, it, it's basically the magic hour so what that means is that it's that time of the day where it's you know fish are coming in close and uh they're um you know they're feeding in close and you want to obviously catch them closer to the bank and usually it, if you can keep it, the, the feed going in they tend to be a good stamp so what what we need to do uh, with this uh, today is i'm using a quick stop so if you haven't seen a quick stop before it's a little piece of plastic that you tie in your line just below your hook and you get one of these little needles and this allows you to put bait on it usually corn or meat or some types of softer pellets um but it's it's revolutionized um sort of match fishing and commercial fishing it's something that has been used probably not well probably going on 15 or so years now in the commercial game but in uh, cart fishing for a long long time and we've just sort of adopted it and it works really really well so if you have uh, you might have had experience in that so if we're going through the side of the corn like so and we grab hold of the piece of quick stop and pull out the needle and then we just turn that little quick stop and that gives you that corn so you could hook it on and you probably would still catch 
uh, but we we want it there so it sits just below as soon as they take that corn there's no chance of taking that corn and not taking that hook it's just gonna be straight into the fish's mouth and the fish is gonna be on so in regards to putting the bait on I've put a little scoop in like that is the base we're only using a small feeder and then I'm putting the, the bait on top and I just you can do it in a mold if you want to and um, that's not a problem um, I like to just do it by hand it's just one of those things I've done for a while give it a little bit of a press down and then one more over the top and a press down the reason I do that is because it's quite dry mixture it is, there is some moisture in but I, I want to make sure it's compact because it's going to ex it's going to explode out and then I always give it one last press before I cast it now that that's the other thing I like about the hybrid uh, feeders or the Jura banjos or the guru ones is it's got high sides so you can sort of almost press it flat into there which makes it really easy so in regards to where we cast him um, there's some reeds on my right hand side uh, and I'm just trying to get a little flick cast in there uh, just around that area because that's usually where the fish are at this time of day so I've just had a little cast I don't want to go too too close to the reeds to start off with um, so I'm just going to start a little bit far away because uh, it's uh, obviously a louder noise I don't want to uh, to spook any fish and once I get them starting to feed uh, we'll cast it a little bit closer so go, moving on from that I've got the way that I'm set up now what I'll do is I'll just change the camera angle and you can come and have a look down the rod and it'll explain and I'll explain a little bit why uh, I have it how it is and how important it is to have it like that right so we've got a different angle and as you can see we've got a couple of little things to make my life a lot easier and to make us fish more consistently so as you can see firstly I've got a little rest there so it's attached it's a little attachment and it slides up and down in a little holder um, Preston in my opinion are the daddies when it comes to rests and attachments um, as you can probably see from what I've got around my box but great so it holds the butt the butt of the rods there I can pick it up straight away when the fish is on moving on from that you can see there's a feed around there it, again the main part of it stays on my box um, and it's just detached in two seconds by flipping the switch down and pulling out the pole and it's as simple as that and and the rod rest I use that simple kind of u-shaped rod rest because if if you can see on camera the eye is against it and um, so if I get a fish and I'm not looking or for some reason I, I reach for something and a fish takes it <clears throat> it will hit the end of that rod rest and it will stop it from pulling it in the water at least for a limited time that I can grab it um, or the drag will kick in so it's a perfect height it's not it's not up here so it's awkward and it's not too low down that I have to reach down here it's just literally at the side I have to lean slightly forward and pick it up most people are taller than me and would have longer arms than me would able to pick that up even without sort of bending down but for me that's perfect it's comfortable it's out the way um, I've got I can sit fully on the box there two footed it's not it's not gonna hit my leg when I pick it up I can just literally pick that straight up and so I would recommend having some form of setup like that um, there's loads of different things on the market that you can get and uh, don't have to be Preston that you can find an attachment to one hold the butt of the rod and two hold the, the tip of the rod the other thing to, to look at is the angle of the rod as you can see the tip is almost touching the water there's a, also getting a little touch on it there as well but it, the tip is almost touching the water and that's really important because what we're wanting to do is to you can see there's a little bit of chop on the water trying to alleviate missed bites we want to be able to see everything so the lower it is to the water the less wind it's catching so you can see all your bites it's positive um, and you know it's accurate uh, so it's really important to do that I mean when you're fishing on a river that's slightly different you would have it up so the less water less line to water would be less drag on the rod that's a little bit different but for, for commercial fishing or still water fishing you want that tip as low as you can get it really to the water to alleviate any wind drag on it even if it's a calm day you just get yourself into the habit of doing it plus the angle of it with a tip down and the, the butt 
higher up just means that you can pick up that rod nice and easy. So we've had a couple of seconds, uh, we've left it two minutes and I wouldn't really want to leave it much longer than that. Uh, we've had a, little, a couple of indications but no, uh, no fish. So what I'm going to do now is just lift it a little bit closer to the reed and um, just work my way in there. Um, if I'm fishing at distance then I'm a, I'm a, a, lot, a lot less tentative to, to get it closer but when I'm really sort of close quarters and you're flicking a feeder in it's a bit difficult to, to try and not spook the fish uh, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a flick in and see if we can get it a bit closer so this time we've got it a lot closer to the reeds and that's just gonna give us probably a little bit better chance of hooking the fish What, what I do see a lot of times when I, I watch people feed a fish is that they put too much of a bend on the rod. For me, I, I don't like that. I think a lot of it doesn't give you any leeway for line bites or anything like that. Um, you can clearly see a line bite with a quick sort of pull back and drop off. But when your lines, your, your, your tip's really bent round, you can end up dislodging your feeder or your bomb or whatever is in there just on a line bite and you know could lead to foul, foul looking fish as well so you do need a little bit of um, a curve on the rod that's uh, for obviously drop back bites um, especially if you're fishing for for skimmers or anything like that uh, but not too much into another fish now lovely bite Took it straight round off the rest. I don't think it's a particularly big fish, but it'd be losing a bit of light. Um, and I've not had as much camera battery as what I wanted today, so I'll get hopefully get this fish in, and then we'll uh, show you uh, what kind of a session we've had um, in the keep net. Fingers crossed, we've got enough battery to to show that. Like I said, these fish are full and full of beans, and they don't like to uh, to give up easily. I don't think it's a particularly big fish. It's like one of the little uh, sort of three to four pounders that are in here but the good thing is you catch these all day and you know it, it's fantastic spot and just giving me a little bit of a, a soak in there Don't be afraid of letting them take line if they want to take it, even if they are these smaller, smaller fish. There we go, is it the net? Three spooler, I'm just put it over there. And we'll just uh, get him unhooked and uh, we'll hold it. Right, so we've got her unhooked. This is, I'd say maybe a little bit under the average stamp uh, of fish that's in here. But what a wonderful fish! Beautiful fish in the in the down in the the sunset. And uh, I'll get the net out, and we'll see just how many we've had of these today. Right, 
right guys so you can see we've had a fantastic session today on the uh, on the Durabanjo elasticated feeder I don't want to leave these out too much too much longer so uh, join us on the Facebook group angling for you join us at the Instagram at angling underscore for you like and subscribe give us a share guys that lines <laughs>